Well, hello and a very warm welcome to the Andrew Eborn Show with me, Andrew Eborn. And I tell you what, we're going to launch a special feature now, an extension of Andrew Eborn's greatest writs called A Pair of Briefs. And who better to do that with than my good old chum, uh, Steve Barrett. How are you, Steve? I'm very well, thank you. Well, always a joy. What we talked about, so separately, because we're both background lawyers, uh, if you like, a barristers and so on and so forth, is every episode we've got to unpack a particular area of uh, the law. And at the moment, we've got like, so who he who controls the language rules the world. That's what Stalin said. And there's so much about hate crimes and basically things which are non-crime hate incidents. Uh, we thought we'd unpack that first of all. So do you want to start us off with basically what a hate crime is as opposed to a non-crime hate incident? So hate crimes are in legislation and they are defined and they are um, crimes which are motivated or believed to be motivated against particular groups. So people on the basis of ethnicity, their religious group, their sexuality, um, their sex, uh, whether they're a man or a woman. Um, although I'm not actually sure it is a crime again. Anyway, but um, they exist. The, the, the non-crime hate incidents are worse, but they're two species of, of the same idiocy. They they really stem from the idea that if you say nasty things, bad things will happen. And that's the logic for them. And the people who bring in these, because we mustn't um, be, ever be rude. I don't think it's very helpful um, in life to be to be rude with, with your opponents. I, I disagree with these people. I think these people are wrong but I think that their motivation is genuine. I think th the problem stems from the fact that they genuinely believe that if you say, because you're more racy than me, so if you say something racy now, that will lead to some terrible crime in the yes. future. And we saw, we saw this with Southport. They, I, I, don't, I don't think that they're disingenuous. I think that they're, they're idiots, but I think that they genuinely believe that a tweet will cause a riot. I mean, in order to have a riot, you have to first of all have a mass of human beings. You have to have a group of human beings who are motivated and energetic enough in order to go out and cause some damage. And they probably need some weapons and they probably need a weak police response and they probably need goading, you know, from somewhere. But the idea that a tweet can just cause all this. I mean, does it, wouldn't it be marvellous if, 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 if by tweets we could we could achieve all sorts of good things then? Surely, surely by sending a tweet, I can build a railway line between Oxford and Cambridgeshire. Surely I must be able to. Uh, if the, if the, tweets the, can just cause things. I, absolutely. Well, the word is mightier than the sword. But and I think it, it is important, Steve, as well, because we, we talk about they, they report there were 140,561 hate crimes were recorded by the police in England and Wales up to the year uh, March 2024. And they actually said that was a 5% decrease but these non-crime hate incidents there are about 13,000 of these and the problem about this is about being perceived about hostility or prejudice it doesn't reach the threshold of a crime uh, the reason for it it all goes back to the McPherson report in 1999 following the uh, the murder of Stephen Lawrence and trying to deal with that now however the threshold is so tiny we've had ridiculous examples in the press uh, where somebody's saying that you know, school children you say somebody smells like a fish or somebody says they've had an aggressive haircut or, or they're called uh, um, a, a, a leonard i think there's supposed to be a homosexual slur is what they say all of these things have led to these sort of reports of these non-crime hate incidents and i think this is missing out on the mission behind it as you say the mission was to prevent escalation but the real problem is that the police themselves need to have proper guidance well what's your view on that so the college of policing created non-crime hate incidents so point one in a healthy democracy something called the college of policing should not be making new laws okay right. that point point one who the hell are they we don't know who they are they're not elected by anybody there's no you know oversight or control of them not really and this is a very just just a bad idea we we've lived through this bad idea quite often if, if listeners um and viewers will probably might if they work in a large company they may well have a policy team they may well have policies and they may well have heard from other large companies oh you can't do x because it's our policy now nothing drives me 
more round the bend because they're always stupid ideas and they've got no legitimacy other than the fact that they are allegedly policy. So this idea is sadly not limited to the College of Policing, but the College of Policing is sat there again with a perfectly good motive. I mean, the murder of Stephen Lawrence was horrible. It was traumatic. It shocked the entire nation. Um, I was uh, like to remember um, remember that, and, and and we should point that out. And they don't they don't want racism. Well, good. I don't want racism either. You know, and r racism is inherently stupid, which it is. Of course, it is. It's, it's irrational. It's mad. Um, and so they they have these good motives, but then they sit there in their little presumably team meetings or bonding exercises as the College of Policing, and all of these rather um, similarly minded. Um, individuals convince themselves that they need to create non-crime hate incidents in order to, that's what will defeat racism. Right, well, it, if that is true, racism would be gone. It, you know, the, these people never, they never stopped. And 10 years later, and you go, uh, you haven't actually fixed the problem, you've made it worse. They never feel, seem to face any accountability. But yeah, they, they invented this idea. A man called Harry Miller then took them to court. Um, and the court was absolutely horrified by all of this. The judges did not like this at all. It's like, what on earth have you done? You're lunatics. And you get you get the complete, because our judges are very po-faced, so they don't sort of tell you you're a complete nutter to your face. That's not what they do. But they say things like, it is not for us to redraft this for the college policing, <laughs> which is, is the least subtle way of saying you have written utter tosh. You yeah. have written complete garbage. But it is not for us to read that. So they, they get a kicking in that. And then in 2002, the Conservative government were passing another piece of legislation. And it looks to me like somebody in the House of Lords has gone, this is bonkers. And they they put in a section in law saying that non-crime hate incidents should be controlled by the Home Secretary. Now, that's perfectly well and good. Well, the Home Secretary is Suella, who is a gifted lawyer, who, whatever, whether you like Suella or not, she's, she's an able lawyer, so she knew what she was doing. So she was just like, shut this down. But now the Home Secretary is not a gifted lawyer, and the Home Secretary is motivated by a desire to be seen to be doing good. So the Home Secretary said, well, well maybe we'll just have more of these. This would be great. It's just, it's completely insane. Why are we doing this? And the motive is pure, but the logic is just rubbish. And it, like, as in, in an entirely foreseeable way, the process becomes the punishment. And this is now what our police do rather than, oh, oh, and because our police are doing this, we have an epidemic of other crime. And no, we do. I, I, we have such an epidemic of crime, it's untrue. No, and and, and you, you, make, you make an excellent point. And Harry Miller, he was trying to highlight the nonsense of the whole thing by saying that he identified as a fish. Uh, and, and that's why that's why he sort of brought this case. Uh, and Shadow Home, Home Secretary Chris Philp, uh, he basically urges uh, people to focus on on serious crime, not these trivial incidents. The biggest problem I've got, Steve, is, is that if somebody gets one of these against them, it stays on their record. So the advanced searches that people do uh, will show up at these particular reports um, and as a result could affect their employment. Yes. And that's why having them on children is particularly stupid because we need children to be educated, go and get jobs and pay tax. We do not need children to be educated, grow up and then be told, oh, sorry, you called someone Leonard once, therefore we can't employ you. I mean, this, uh, well, this is it, it is great. I mean, even the DPP, Stephen Parkinson, he, he admitted confusion over the definition and handling. And I think so the police officers, uh, the general plot on, on the streets, um, they all say, look, we're just doing what we're told to do. We've got to investigate all these things. Um, so we can't spend all our time investigating serious crime, but we get muddled up with this. And they had the same problem in Scotland, didn't they? Uh, when they first talked about uh, uh, the police came out and said, we're going to investigate every single allegation. And J.K. Rowling, as in bowling, uh, wisely came out and, and basically said, well, arrest me first. Well, I think the problem is in Scotland, they just everybody reported the first minister. So it's just <laughs> it absolutely. And it, it, it is the same problem everywhere because everybody's trying to police hate at the same time. It's almost as though we're all controlled by communists at the same time. But um, the simple fact is you cannot, as you well know, you cannot do it. You cannot police emotions. And it just it just doesn't work. And 
um, the DPP got criticised for not knowing about these things. But I think actually let's let's help. And I just a full disclosure, I don't actually can't actually remember the name of the DPP. I don't genuinely like generally like uh, criminal lawyers. I, I tend to tend to be a bit sniffy about them. But um, but let's throw him a bone and be kind to him. Yes. In my type of law, I know all about the stuff that's happening in cases involving tens of millions of pounds because that's what I'm doing. I don't really know what's going on in small value cases and what the rules are and what's going on, you know, how the courts approach them, what they do, because they, I'm too expensive. So I'm just not that. The DPP should be dealing with horrendous murders, terrible sex crimes, you know, child awful things happening to children. And he's not going to be dealing with non-crime hate incidents. That yeah. It falls all the way down to, to basic plot. And that that is the problem, that this is given basic plot the uh, dangerous position of having to work all of this out on their own, which is, I mean, that must be pretty scary. I, I, I'm not sure I'd want to look at this and go, what the hell am I supposed to do? Right. Um, could you give me some guidance? Oh no, just go fix it. Oh, and and it, it allows people to abuse it. And it's very clear that, that this is being abused. It's very clear that there are people in our world who want to abuse these systems. I often think that the last 30 years are characterized by us almost acting as though everybody is morally good. And that strikes me as utterly stupid, given that we know, I mean, I'm good, you're, you're good, you're good, but, but that doesn't mean everybody is good. It certainly doesn't mean every barrister is good. It doesn't mean every doctor is good. You know, there are bad ones and wrong ones all left, right and center. You know, they, we cannot design a country that assumes everybody's just super lovely. It, 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 it's not going to work. And yeah, it, I, I, it I, if freedom of speech means anything, it's the right to offend. And I, I, I know this is the real problem. I, I do a lot of work in, uh, on comedy shows as well, and comedians are so scared of what they're allowed to say now. I, I, and I say it's a, uh, you, you've got to work on that basis. And, and over in America, they're laughing at us. Uh, Elon Musk, I have his father Errol on my show virtually every day and he was saying look they're looking over here they talk about they have free speech in America uh, and here it is you get put in jail if you if, if you express what you have to do um the great thing about this we're going to come back on a regular basis we're going to unpack these sort of topics if people are interested there's a particular topic you'd like uh, the pair of briefs to have a look at uh, do get in touch how can they get in touch with you Steve uh they can tweet me and dm me um, I, I'm going to let you deal with most of this. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so they should get in touch with you. You can contact me then. Contact me. It's easy. At Andrew Eborn, at Octopus TV. Do it via tweet and we'll get you on the show. Whatever you want to talk about, we're happy to talk about it. Uh, Steve, for now, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Take care.